from what you have seen, from what you have as in check in your past question, you should be able to decode the manner or the ways through which why ask question on foreign uh, policy. And that should not be a problem. So let us start solving some problem now. So that we will not carry everything to SST to be of a great help when you get to SST. Sincerely speaking, it will help you. Thank you. Now, uh, before I will come back to the work I gave to you, to tell me the years you have found out the question on foreign policy, especially the factor that determines foreign policy, either of Nigeria, that of Nigeria or West Africa, we, we do our own little job here first. When I say determinant, I mean something that influenced Nigeria foreign policy. When I say determinant of Nigeria foreign policy, I mean something that influenced Nigeria foreign policy. And don't forget, in the past uh, three, two classes, we have looked into the concept of foreign policy. We have as well dig deep into some terms used in foreign policy in terms of uh, dom policy, domestic policy, national interest, state actor, no state actors. And we have as well looked at the objectives of Nigeria foreign policy, also the features of Nigeria foreign policy. Now, there are some things we have delved into in the past that feature here as one of the factors or as one of the determinants of Nigeria foreign policy. Uh, let me just, before I go in detail into the subject matter, some of you, you take decision, and decision you take is as a result of your innate character. When I say innate character, I mean it's a result of your kind of inbuilt uh, value. In essence, I think, uh, SS1, you were taught value in civic education. And you should have been taught that there are some type, different types of value, categories of value. And that's why we have intrinsic value and intrinsic value. Where I'm going is it intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is an inbuilt character that determines what you do. For instance, Akiyeva, are you with me? Okay. For instance, if I slap you now, something will tell you, I should slap you back. Well, I'm not going to tell that, don't slap me. So, what's trying to determine that action within you is what we call intrinsic value. That's why we call it inbuilt character that influences your action. Okay, there's nothing you do that there will not be something that influences that action. If you want to eat, some, something will influence that because you are hungry. And the type of food you want to eat Something will also influence that is your appetite. Something will influence the same thing in foreign policy. There are factors or what I call determinants that influence or that determine the foreign policy of a state. If you are hungry, you want to eat rice, you will not go and buy. Gary and make ever. The fact that you want to eat rice, you are going to plan yourself based on what you need. The same thing in a state. When a state is planning her foreign policy, so should be planned based on the needs of that state, based on the desire of that state. And on that note, let me throw the floor open now. What do you think can be one of the factors that influence Nigeria foreign policy? Anybody? Based on what I have said, you should be able to do that. Anybody?
Anybody? If you don't talk, I will call you. Oh, thank God. Abbas Mloye is coming today. If you don't talk, I will call you. Okay. Need me. I'm with yourself. Tell me one, based on the analysis I have made now, tell me one of the factors you think, or one of the terminal you think that can influence Nigeria foreign policy. Uh, um, they want to foster friendly, friendly relations with other countries. That is objective. Okay, that is objective. I am referring to the factors, factors that are considered, something that are considered. I said something. I said if you are hungry and your taste is for you to eat rice, will you go and buy gari and make a bar? It's a question to you. No, sir. Okay, now, what are those things you think can determine the foreign policy of your country or West African states? Based on what I have just asked you, just think, just think. I said, you want to eat Maybe you want to, okay, maybe you want to make tea, you want to eat bread. And that is, your, that is what your appetite says that you should take. Will you decide to go and buy rice and cook rice? So just think, mm. think. Then what do you think can influence the foreign policy of Nigeria or that of West Africa or any country? Please, if you are here with anonymous name, rename yourself. It's why KTV phone. Please rename yourself. Nifemi, I'm not to please. Unmute yourself. Yes. Um, prudence. Sir. Answer that question. Okay, factor that can influence Nigerian foreign policy. Um, good results from um, from previous government, like like commit like when the previous governments that they interacted with, like they achieve a common goal together. They want to do it again. Mm, the common government, that government you are mentioning in. What, in what kind of is it the government locally here or what? I don't understand. Can you please share more light on what you have said? No, no, like not local, like for you. I, okay, you are referring to a kind of good rapport relationship that ensure a sort of relationship with a former uh, with a country in the past, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, yes, I said that if I have, maybe I have related with a Nifemi as a country, and the, the, the positive result from the relationship. Don't forget that if I leave office and Jessica succeed me as the president of Nigeria, Jessica will likely continue with that relationship based on what the country gets from the particular country such relationship have been established with. Okay. Yes, uh, I take that. Okay. Aisha, you are welcome. I'm happy to see you. You know, she's my daughter. No, she can disturb me. Yes, I can hear me. What do you think again in your own that can determine the foreign policy of your country? From the analysis I have made so far. Unmute yourself. You have the privilege to unmute yourself and talk. Yes, I'm with you. 
from the analysis I have made, what do you think that can determine, what are those things that can determine the current policy of your country or that of West Africa country or any country in the world? I don't understand the question. Are you sure you have been with me since you logged in? Please. I sent out a sermon before the commencement of the class officially. I said this class should be announced as a privilege to learn different things because there are some things I will do here. Even when school resume physically, we may not be able to do them. And don't carry any problem from this class to SS3. You are in a set, you are a set, you are a, you are a semi finalist. Hmm? You are a semi finalist. You should start assessing yourself now. If what I have just said now, you could not take it, then what happened to what you have been taught in SS1? Please pay attention. It is important. I said, if you are hungry now and your taste, that was where I started. Your taste says you should eat uh, maybe bread and egg, okay, fried. Will you go ahead and make provision for a bar and a bowl of soup? I'm still with you. I can hear me. No, sir. Uh -huh, you won't do that. So you are going to plan yourself based on based on your desire, based on what you feel like eating. Okay. Now I am now I I I, I use that one as a means of relating as, as in connecting you to the conceptual meaning or objective of today's class. That is. In that case, if yours, you need this and you are going to plan yourself based on what you need, that what, what you plan now is being determined based on your appetites. You have decided to go for bread and egg based on your appetites. Okay? Now, as a country, what are those things you think that can influence or that can determine the type of foreign policy, the type of objectives a state will want to achieve, or why a state will decide to relate to a particular country and decide not to relate to a particular country. What are those factors? What are those determinants? That's the question I have asked you. No response. I will still allow you to go and Think very well. Where is uh, Aisha? Let's see me our network. It's bad. Okay. No problem. Let me tell you one of the reasons, one of the factors that determine Nigeria foreign policy, or that of West Africa, or any countries in the world, is the economic. Uh, Factor. The economic factor in the sense that either a country wants to create markets for a surplus product is under economic factor, or a country has a certain product that needs to be as in taken to finish one for it to be useful, and such a country couldn't do it on her own. That is also economic factor. If you look at what you are, you, I have on the screen, you will find that you will see all this, all this uh, what is it called? Companies like again, you see they are called refinery. This is refinery. Okay, and you see some badges on the IC. I'm very close say you will see palm cane. On the other side, you see varieties of fruit. If a state, for it like Nigeria, rich in terms of 
crude oil or natural resources. But as a country, Nigeria can not effectively refine the crude oil because of certain challenges based on technical expertise. Then, Nigeria needs to relate with a country that is technically inclined to assist in refining the oil for it to be useful. I was listening to news this morning that NFPC MD was saying that the Cardinal Refinery did not produce anything in 2018. Yet, the refinery got up about, wasted about a 60 something billion naira. These are some of the challenges. We have to take our crude oil out of the country, refine it, only get the petrol, the diesel back, while others will remain in those countries. Anyway, let me leave that aspect for now. So, economic factor could be in form of creating markets. For instance, Nigeria now is producing cassava. Some country cannot be measured up with Nigeria in production of cassava. If the cassava is produced in surplus, there are some country need it somewhere. The still for Nigeria to make a foreign policy in the economic arena to ensure that that country gets related with Nigeria, whereby Nigeria will be exporting cassava to the country. And possibly there will be a particular product in that country that Nigeria may also need. There will be a kind of a bilateral relationship with Nigeria and that uh, country. That is economic factor, determining the foreign policy Nigeria has embarked on that perspective. And other, other reason is that you should know that technologically we are not there. Most of what we use as technology, your mobile phone, your laptop, and everything, you import them. Since we couldn't produce all these materials, there's need for us to also relate with country that is technologically inclined to help us in such a way that we were able to import those products at a minimal cost for the benefit of the citizens that are in need of it and the country at large. So one basic factor that determines or influence the country Nigeria will relate with, the Nigeria will what? Establish a form of relationship with and that form part of the Nigeria foreign policy is economic factor. And the economic factor is what I have explained in this different uh, perspective. Wouldn't you understand that? Yes, sir. I can, uh, I can say more in. Do you understand that? I can say more in. Okay, I know. I notice your, net, your network log you out at the time. If you don't understand, pen down your question. I will take it as at when due. Okay. Uh, Nifemin, I noticed you went out a while. Do you understand the economic factor as a determinant of Nigeria foreign policy? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Now, another one we're going to look at here. If you look at my map, you see that I have the map of Nigeria. I said geographical factor. I'm going to teach you a topic. Though that topic below to SS3, but I'm going to teach you maybe the next one or two weeks to portray some things here. Okay. Uh, when you say geographical factor, I'm referring to the location of Nigeria and the countries that border Nigeria. When I say border, I mean B O R D E R. Hmm? Not B O T A E R, okay? The country that border Nigeria. If you look at the map of Nigeria, you will see Niger at the corner and the other part of the north in the around Lake Chad. You see Chad. You will see Lake, you see Chad. In the west, okay. In the west, you see the Republic of Benin, okay. And in the south south, close to the area where we have the Aqua Ibon and Cross River, you will see Cameroon. Though Cameroon share border with Nigeria in the south and in the north. Okay, if you look at the map, 
Cameroon also share border with Nigeria in Adamawa area. That is in the northeast. Also share border with Nigeria in the south south. It's the only country that share border with Nigeria, both in the north and in the south. Then you also look at the Atlantic Ocean down here. Don't be surprised that this Atlantic Ocean lead to Equatorial Guinea. This Atlantic Ocean will also take you to Ghana. Okay, we take you to the Lake of Togo. As we have land border with some country, we also have maritime border with some country. Nigeria has maritime border with Equatorial Guinea. If you leave Nigeria here now, you can drive to Equatorial Guinea. Now, where I'm going is that the location of Nigeria, either be and, and the country that border Nigeria, either the either the land border or the maritime border, determine the kind of foreign policy Nigeria we embark upon. In the sense that if Nigeria is to make any policy at all, the neighboring states should be considered. I will tell you why. And before I will tell you why, I want to, I want to come home first. Uh, if you have a sister at home, and that sister likes to eat junks, food that are not compatible to the body system. And you know that if that sister should eat that food and the problem comes, it's going to affect possibly you are sleeping in the same room. And in the night, the sister will hold her stomach. In my stomach, oh, uh, will you be able to sleep? Mm. Eh? Prudence, no, you, you, you will be able to sleep. Now, if that sister is sitting there food and you know that he's going to share the same room with you at night and going to cause you problem, what will you do to that sister? Will you no, allow that no. sister to continue to eat that kind of food? No. You won't. Okay? You won't. The same way that Nigeria consider our neighboring states because whatever affects them also affect us. Whatever affects the Republic of Benin, we affect Nigeria. Don't forget, if you enter Seme border here, you cross to, 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 to Benin Republic, you cross to Badagri, enter Nigeria. It, there are some routes too in uh, this uh, Ibadan area. There are some routes in Abe Okuta. See, this is Republic of Benin, this is Nigeria. And if there's political crisis in Republic of Benin, they will run away from their country. They will come to a country where there's no political crisis, and that is Nigeria. And I believe you will have been taught in your economics what in, as a factor that lead to inflation in time of uh, population. Hmm? Have you been taught about emigration? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Emigration is the coming in of people from other country or country where immigration is the going out. Okay? Now, if there's a crisis in any of these uh, neighboring country, it affects Nigeria because they will run away from their country. Let me quickly give you a, a, a vivid example. Some of them, they, are not even, they, they, they don't even share a physical border with us, but they're from their country, they can trek to our country. For instance, from Mali, from Libya, you can trek to Nigeria. If you're not aware, we have roots through the land. The so-called that are threatening the peaceful coexistence in Nigeria. A kind of security report has shown that the majority of them they are not from Nigeria. Some are from Chad, some are from Niger, some are from Mali. You can see the problem of one country. Now, in Mali, there's a problem in Mali. Political crisis there. And in most cases, some of these areas that are rich Sahara deserts. The Fulanis could not have a uh, green grass to feed their Katu. And such can be found in Nigeria. And since such can be found in Nigeria, they have to migrate down to Nigeria. And you can see what they are causing in Nigeria now. They will cut their cow or cattle to somebody's to somebody farms. And they will graze on the farms and destroy the farmland. Hence, the herdsman and uh, farmers uh, clash in the country. The problem is not actually within Nigeria. It's sort of the problem that our neighboring country, also far distant country, that can actually have a linkage to us, they encounter that cause them to come to Nigeria. So Nigeria take interest in those countries because their problem is our problem. 
And that's why I'm going to teach a topic called Africa the centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy. You understand how Nigeria has said Africa must take the first place in our international relation. Because whatever affects them, also what affects us. Whatever affects Cameroon affects Nigeria. Whatever affects Niger affects Nigeria. Whatever affects Chad affects Nigeria. Whatever affects Republic of Benin affects Nigeria. And if there's a problem in the Atlantic Ocean that affects the Christian Guinea, one way or the other, those people can also come to Nigeria to come and operate. Our, our waterway will not be safe. Therefore, Nigeria needs Nigeria impact on foreign policies, maybe time of security, okay? Maybe it's kind of security ties. Nigeria have security ties with the gay and with all this country in order to ensure security of lives and the security of the, security of the borders to prevent the marauders from, from coming to the country. I don't know if you have understood how geographical factor influenced Nigeria foreign policy. Can you hear me? So, Do you understand how geographical factor influence Nigeria foreign policy now? Yes, so. If you come across questions like this, you're able to explain it very well. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't forget that under the geographical factor, there's a there's another another term embedded in, and that is security. Hmm? Security can also be time as political factor. So that security, security threats of Nigeria that one way or the other may link or has a kind of relationship with other country uh, with the neighboring country influence Nigeria foreign policy. That is still I'm trying to narrate the concept of the geographical location of Nigeria. Boko Haram now is Nigeria problem, but it's not only Nigeria that is suffering from Boko Haram. Cameroon is suffering from Boko Haram, Chad, Niger. So then, Nigeria need to embark on a foreign policy that will ensure foreign relationship with Nigeria and all these countries to ensure that Boko Haram is annihilated. Okay. Uh, Prudent, do you understand it very well? Yes, sir. Okay. For those of you that are coming in, going out, uh, the class is recorded, you, any area you miss, you can also get the video later and look into it. And if you have questions, just can be sent into to my WhatsApp uh, line. So that is what I said, because we will not continue here. Now, uh, another factor is what we call demographic factor. Demographic factor or population. As a matter of fact, Nigeria is the most populous state in Africa and entire black world. The population strength of Nigeria places her on the cadre of leader or leadership in Africa. And aside that, the diverse ethnic group that constitutes Nigeria serve as a very sensitive factor in determining Nigeria foreign policy. When I say the diverse ethnic group that constitutes Nigeria serve as a sensitive factor that determines Nigeria foreign policy, you are aware now that the Fulanese, the rare animals, and you can be assured that if we need beef, in the country, we will have it in abundance. And should we not because in the, I want you to listen, hey Jessica, listen to me. Should we not because in the South, we are not wearing, we are not into animal husbandry like the Fulanese in the North, that Nigeria should be importing animal or beef or cattle. Eh? The answer is no, you can't. Because if you should do that, you are killing the business of the Fulanese. So, there are things you can get in the South, among the Yorubas, the Igbo, the, uh, uh, the Epic, the Jaws, the Calabarese, among others. 
and you don't get it among the Fulanese, the Kaluris, the Gwandaras, the Domas in the north. And what you get from those ones there, you may not get it here. So you before you embark on your foreign policy, the, forget where you come from as the president of that country. You must consider those products that are available in the different parts of the country. Encourage those people to produce those things instead of bringing those things from outside the country in order to kill the economy of the different ethnic groups occupying different geographical locations in the country. I'm talking of the diverse ethnic groups in the country, different ethnic groups with different characteristics, with different products in their locations. Uh, I know some of you offer a Greek in junior secondary school. Okay, if you are not offering it now. You have different type of soil. We have, there's a cell so called loamy soil. You know in loamy soil, you can plant different things there to germinate. But when you go to sandy soil, can you? And when you go to the muddy area in the south, in, in the south, south, in the Niger Delta, can you plant? No. So you must consider that. That is one, that perspective. Another perspective, this is the problem one that I said, Nigeria happened to be the most populous black country in the world, not only in Africa. But being the most populous country in Africa, that population give prestige to Nigeria as the giant of Africa. And Nigeria, because, you know, if somebody respects you, let me leave that area for let me come back to this. If somebody usually give you respect because of one thing or the other, don't, would you place yourself where the respect will continue? Um, about Femi, if somebody, maybe boss, you are academically sound and give you due respect, will you do something that will make the respect to fly away? Yes, sir. No, you want to maintain that. So the population of Nigeria in Africa is a kind of regard, not only in Africa, even the world recognize Nigeria. Most country, in Nigeria, most country in the world, they trade Nigeria because they find that Nigeria is well populated and Nigeria is a good market. So that also influences the kind of foreign policy Nigeria embarks upon the population, the need of the citizen. One is that the fact that the population has given us a kind of place in Africa or in the world, we maintain that status quo and that determines who the country we relate with. Okay, that also determine what we get outside the country to our country to benefit the citizen. And I have said that how the different ethnic groups in the country too help one way or the other to shape the foreign policy in terms of availability of materials or, or resources in their location. I don't know if there's anybody that does not understand population or demographic factor as a determinant of Nigeria foreign policy. Does anybody let me know that doesn't understand? Does anybody that doesn't understand that? Let me know. Don't forget we're looking at determinant of Nigeria foreign policy or determinants or factor that influence Nigeria foreign policy. And Okay, maybe when I when I cap it up, I will tell you something on this because question may come. If you not be Nigeria, it may tell you that West Africa. So you should understand some things how to how to explain. Now another factor is woke up personality of the leaders. When I say leader here, I, I'm referring to the president or the head of state of that country at a time. For your information, if the same mother give birth to us, even when we are twins, give birth to on the same day, conceive at the same time, give to the same day, we cannot reason the same way. We may be identical twins, but we cannot reason the same way. The same thing, different leaders, different head of state, or different presidents in a country, they have their own personality. Someone like me now. I should become president of Nigeria. 
There are some countries that I may not want to relate to it on personal ground. You can't change it because I'm the president of Nigeria. The president of the country, the chief planner of the country foreign policy. It is what he, when the Minister of Finance, Minister of Foreign Affairs, National Planning, the diplomat, all of them, they come together. Whatever he says is final. So the personality eh, or the personal behavior of the leader of a country, or when I say leader, I mean the president or the head of state of that country at a particular time, determine the foreign policy a state will embark upon. Determine the type of country the state we have relationship with. Let me give you a quick uh, example. Of course, we are going to look at when we are dissecting the foreign policy of Nigeria under different administration in the country. During the Abasha era, Abasha has what we call a kind of kangaroo foreign policy because he kicked against every democratic norms and Nigeria gets sanctioned from most of the international nations, especially the Commonwealth of Nations. And most of the Western nations, because Abasha failed to so protect human rights in the country, refused to support Nigerian government. And Abasha decided to leave them. Hey, go and sit down. Abasha decided to embark on foreign policy with third world countries in the Middle East, Islamic countries, all those countries that cannot offer Nigeria anything good. Just because of his personality, the fact that I felt that those Western powers, Britain, Canada, USA, they don't like me. So I myself, I hate them. I don't want to relate to them. But when Absalom came to power, June 8, 1998, as a result of the demise of uh, Genasani Abasha, Absalom started to resuscitate Nigeria relationship with all those countries that Abasha had abandoned to relate with. To so tell that the personality of Absalom is different from the personality of uh, Genasani Abasha. When the second ambassador came to power, all those strained relationships that Nigeria had with some countries in the world, with some international organizations, or specialized agents of the United Nations, of also just renewed the relationship, telling you that the relation, the, the personality of the person of Obasanjo is different from that of uh, Abasha or uh, Absalom. As a matter of fact, if you peer the, uh, the foreign policy embarked upon by Obasanjo and Buhari together now, you will see some differences. And the differences is based on the fact that Obasanjo has his own personality. General Muhammad Buhari also has his own uh, personality. And he needs to do that based on his own belief. So, the person you are, your philosophical belief, your like and dislike as a leader of a country determine who you relate with. So, the leader, the president of a country in most cases, is a factor to determine the foreign policy a state will embark upon. I don't know if that is well understood. Aisha, do you get it? Mute your, mute yourself. You yes, get, sir. All right, all right. Oh, uh, here. Yeah. I think I've explained this one before. I want somebody to explain it for me. I've explained this one, and it was a question. If you put check the past question you uh, you gone through, uh, prudent, you should have seen this there. Yeah, this question. Prudent, have I said the truth? Yes, sir. I think uh, was it 2010 or 2016 where they asked what is national interest. So, no, it's just 2016. 2000 and what? It's not 2016. Okay. I know it's either 2007 or 2010. Check. But the question there, what is national interest? And what are the factors that influence the uh, foreign policy of West Africans or something like that? That's, this, that's what the B parts. I've seen the question before. All right. I want somebody to explain this. How national interest influence or determine the foreign policy of a state or of Nigeria? 
Prudent, have you seen it? No, sir. Okay, don't worry. We'll go back to that later. Who is explaining that for us? How national interest? I have first, I explained it my first class. I explained what is national interest. Yes, Prudent. Um, um, foreign policy cannot be made in Nigeria without, without um, looking out for the 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 citizens' well-being. Like they will have to make a policy that is in line with the interests of the citizens and what is going to like help them. Thank you very much. I picked some cogent point there with the well-being. Hmm? You remember when I said I said national interest is determined based on the general need, general thing that affects the entire citizen. And that you remember that idea, I gave an example. I said one of the national interests in this country now is security. I think I had the question. Somebody asked, somebody said employment. I said I accept it because there's massive unemployment in the country. It's a, it's a, it's a national concern. It's not just for the Yoruba alone. All over the country, we, have, we are having a problem with uh, employment. Okay, it's, it's part of the national interest. Insecurity is a problem. Security of the country is a part of the national interest. So, the, whatever that happens to do with the well-being of the entire citizen or populace is a factor that one way or the other influences the foreign policy of Nigeria or of any country of any country in West Africa. What's your people? Okay, let, let me leave, let me leave Nigeria. Let me come home. You are a mother at home. As a mother at home, your children, majority of your children at home, maybe there are three, the three. The two of them said, Mommy, this night we want to eat rice. One said, You want to drink tea. Hmm? Whether you like it or not. The national interest in that house that night is what? Rice. Rice. And you need to embark on means of providing rice for the children. That is it. That is how it happened in the country. The general well being of the citizen. Their agitation, their demand, what they want that to make life beautiful, that to make the country a habitual, a habitable place for them, is what for the national interest. And this influences the foreign policy objective of Nigeria and any government. And that is why you see that Nigeria is encouraging the expatriates, the national, uh, uh, what I call multinational companies, to come to Nigeria because they are coming, they will help to create jobs. And when they create jobs, most Nigerians that are not employed, they will be employed, okay? That's the fact that we need security is one of the reasons we are relating with some other countries, especially our neighboring countries, to ensure that security of lives and property in the country. Many others, these are national interests, these are national concerns that, that affects the entirety of the populace. I think that is understood. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let me see, we say again. Uh, Aki Simoy, I will not recognize you to be in my class. What is wrong with you that you are coming up your video? Uh, um, Femi, do you understand how national interest influence Nigeria foreign policy? Yes, sir. Aki Simoy, yeah. where about you? Aki Simoy, what about you? Sir? Do you understand? How national interest serve as a determinant or a factor that influence Nigeria foreign policy? Yes, sir. Abibat. Yes, sir. Turn on your video. You understand what I just explained now? Yes, sir. All right. Now, as I what I have here, there are other factors. Mute yourself as me speaking. There are other factors, okay? We have historical factors. 
I cannot explain everything, finish here, have everything here, we have triple factors. For instance, the colonial relationship Nigeria had with uh, Britain also influenced Nigeria foreign policy. Okay, don't forget, Britain colonized Nigeria. And that relationship still exists. On the ground that Nigeria is a member of Commonwealth of Nations. Commonwealth of Nations is an association of all past colonies of Britain. I said, Commonwealth of Nations is the association of all past colonies, all former colonies of Britain. The fact that Nigeria is a member of a Commonwealth of Nations and Nigeria has been colonized by Britain, okay, influence the foreign policy Nigeria embark upon. Nigeria will never embark on a foreign policy that will go against the inter interests of British government. On the ground that we were once colonized by Britain and there's need for us to also protect the interests of that country while determining our foreign policy. That is on the ground of historical factor. Okay, I will stop on that arena. I will stop on that arena and I will take your question. And I'll just as I said, I would love you if you can bring the question based on some of the past questions I asked you to study. I'm going to start with prudence. I'm seeing it. I will soon be done. And maybe the next uh, five minutes or ten, ten minutes. Yes, I'm with you, Prudent. Mm, so 2002. 2002. Question four. Question four. Oh, question four. Can I be question four? 12, question 12. Question 12. Okay, what question is the question? 12. What is the question? Okay. Okay. Question. In what four ways has Nigeria demonstrated that Africa is the third piece of our country? Okay, okay. That, the, is that topic is ahead. That topic is, is what I took, said right and that's a, a straight topic that I will teach you too. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's not the, we, are, we are not there yet. Mm. We're not there yet. I'm going to teach you. Just note it. Okay. But, like, uh, for, but for in order for me to just give you a kind of insight, Nigeria has demonstrated Africa as the centerpiece of our foreign policy by supporting liberation movements in Africa. E.g., Nigeria supported, supported the MPLEA led by Augustin Honeto in Angola that led to the presence of that country in 1975. Nigeria supported SWAPO hmm, in Namibia, okay, that led to the presence of that country in 1990, was 1990 or 1991. Okay, SWAPO is Southwestern African Peoples Organization, SWAPO, uh, led by Sam Nujoma. And uh, what was it, MPLA, MPLA is for Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. MPLA stands for Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. Hmm? It is not what starts the abbreviation that actually starts, it is the P that starts it. Please take note of that. Okay, we'll get to that. Nigeria also displayed Africa as the centerpiece of Nigeria of uh, foreign policy by engaging in bilateral relationship with uh, other countries in Africa, maybe economic or political. That was Nigeria is a member of uh, ECOWAS, Nigeria is a member of uh, EAC, that is a African Economic Community. We'll get to that. Hmm? We'll get to that. Yes. 2010, question 11. 2010, question 11. Okay. What is, foreign, what is foreign policy of a country and state the main objectives of Nigerian foreign policy? Okay. I think we have addressed that, right? Yes. Is there anybody now that will have a problem with such a question? No. Okay, so please, I have said that you should read it out for them, for the, some people that will not bother. I think there's a question in 2007, maybe you jump it. 
Stage one to person eleven. Two thousand and seven. Okay. Yes. There's one in two thousand and twelve. There's one in two thousand and twelve. That one two thousand and twelve yeah. has what to do has to do with what we discussed today. All right. All right. What I will advise yes, you is that all those questions you see and the answer that you have seen in your in your past question, they are the hints you must explain. There's no question that you must just state. You have to explain everything, okay? Either they say the object, you must explain them, how they serve as objective for your foreign or the foreign policy of your country, or how they serve as the factor of the, uh, uh, that determine the foreign policy of your country. Then the other time, I said I'm going to say something, and that is, when I said a uh, factor that determine the foreign policy of Nigeria, hmm, the question may come in the way that, if you check the past question you have seen now, they may ask you, factor that the time the foreign policy of West Africa countries, it's still the same thing. Just that you must explain it in perspective of West Africa country. You don't have to restrict to Nigeria alone. For instance, he said, you can say the geographical location of uh, West African states determine their foreign policy. Or you can now give your example of what I have said about uh, Nigeria being located in Africa and being bothered by some countries. Please, is there another question before we call it today? today? Is there another question? No question. Okay. In absence of uh, further question, I believe you have understood this question, uh, this uh, topic. So far, so good. We have looked at the meaning of Nigeria foreign policy, and uh, we have looked at the objectives, some of the conceptual meanings that related to the foreign policy, and we have looked at the factor that determine the foreign policy of the country. But within in our next class, we will be taking one by one, either two or three, in each class the foreign policy under the different administration in the country. And that area, that's where you are going to come across some funny questions in the UTME. So go help us. We'll get, when we get there, I'm going to give you the hints. And the area you may likely come across some questions. At the same time, there's a e-notes, e-textbook that I mean that I will share with you. So I will expect all of you to study them. God bless you. I will send my assignment later. Make sure you do my assignment and do have a pleasant weekend because we're going to see you again next week. Bye-bye.